Welcome to my channel. I'm going to walk you through my entire process of valuing renewable energy stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Comment if you have any questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. This company operates 13 biorefineries and a feedstock processing facility. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $1.55 billion. So as you can see, they're a small cap company and they're trading at $39.35. So that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company, you estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that dollar amount back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm pulling their actual free cash flow. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. We also need the net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement. And also their revenue, which are the sales. That's also on the income statement. Let's take a look at the numbers. So you can see free cash flow is all over the place. It's positive, negative, positive, negative. Net income is a little smoother, but there was a negative in 2017. Revenue tends to be the smoothest, and it seems to be increasing a little bit each year, so that's good. When I see positive net income, like in 2019, 380 million, and negative free cash flow in that same year, that raises a red flag, and I wanted to look into it a little deeper. Let's go back to the cash flow statement in Yahoo. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations, and that's the top of the cash flow statement, CFO minus investments in pp and a and that's in the cash flow for investing section and it's negative 89 million there's a lot of things going on in cash flow from operations because when you operate a business you have a lot of things you have depreciation you have deferred income taxes stock-based compensation but what really sticks out is this accounts receivable of negative 786 million dollars that's the big reason free cash flow is less than net income you can see in prior years, accounts receivables was positive, but in 2019 it was negative. All that means is this company delivered $786 million of product or service to its customers, but it didn't receive anything for it. It booked the revenue onto its income statement, but it didn't receive any cash. It's not a bad thing, it just means they're going to receive the cash in the future, hopefully. But in order to run a business, you need cash. So that's why we look at free cash flow. If you continuously sell on credit, you may run into a cash crunch and not be able to pay your bills and have to take a loan out of the bank for a higher interest rate. So just something to look out for. Let's look at the capital structure of the company. They pay 12.2 million of interest on their debt. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to the liability section. Current debt of 154 million. That's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of 26 million, that's debt due after 12 months. They pay 6.8% interest on their debt. They don't pay taxes. Oil companies generally pay a lot less in taxes compared to other companies. Oil companies have the ability to defer taxes and also they receive lots of subsidies because oil is considered a vital commodity. Let's get the cost of equity. We need the beta for that. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a beta of 1.45. So the stock moves about one and a half times the market. When a company has a high beta, they have a higher cost of equity and they need to provide their investors with a greater return for that greater risk. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets is 1.1 billion. And let's see what that is. 50 million of cash, 858 million of receivables. That's how much other companies owe this company. 163 million of inventory and 2.5 million of other. Let's get their current liabilities. That's 588 million. That's 154 million of current debt, 369 million of accounts payable. That's how much money this company owes other companies. 1.7 million of accrued liabilities. These are expenses a company has incurred but hasn't paid yet. 8.6 million of deferred revenue. This is when a company receives payment for a product or service 
before it delivers it to the customer. And 796 million of other. Let's look at stockholders' equity. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 1.1 billion. And that's 5,000 a common stock, 800 million of retained earnings, which is good. That means they're operating profitably. Retained earnings is all your prior net incomes minus all the prior dividends you paid. And negative 2 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. It's important to look at the details of the balance sheet because I see a lot of people say things like, oh, they have an amazing price to book ratio or they have a lot of equity on a balance sheet. You want to just look at the balance sheet because it might be a really bad balance sheet or it might be a really good one. That makes a big difference in your investing decision. Let's go back to the income statement and get their EBIT operating income. That's 411 million. That's how much they make on their operational business before paying interest and taxes. So they have 14% of debt in the capital structure, cost of debt is 6.8%, 86% equity, cost of equity is 13.5%, and the WAC is 12.5%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's how much it costs this company to obtain financing. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, 2.4 billion. That's all cash flows past year four. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2 billion. We divide that by 39 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of $51. They're trading at $39, so they're trading at a 24% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying $67 the stock is worth, so they're saying it's more undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it looks like it's trading at its all time high, even with coronavirus doing really well. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a great PE 4.1. The median for the entire market is 15.1. They have a great price of sales 0.6. The median in the market is 1.8. The average is 5.4. Price to book is 1.4. That's really good. The median is 2.4. The average is 5.7. This is for the entire market. A little later, we're gonna compare their ratios to others in the industry. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 4.1. So investors are paying $4.10 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.6, so investors are paying 60 cents for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.4, so investors are paying $1.40 for $1 book value. They have a good current ratio, 1.9, the median is 1.3 in the market, the average is 1.8. Really good interest coverage ratio 33.8, the median 4.1, the average 13.4. And they have a great ROE at 34%, the median is 13%, the average is 8%. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities, I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.9. ROE is net income over equity, I like to see above 20%, they're at 34%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 33.8. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on PVF Energy, Parkland, Valero, and Valvoline, all in the same industry as Renewable. And if Renewable has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're much better than the average in PE at 4.1. The average in industry is pretty low at 10.5. Every industry has a different average. That's why you should always compare it to similar companies. Price of sales is 0.6. It's a little worse than the average. Price to book is better than the average. The average is negative because Valvoline has such a big negative. They have the best current ratio, the best ROE, and the lowest in debt. They are small in the average company at only 1.5 billion market cap. The average is 7.6 billion. So they seem to have great ratios. It seems to be a really solid company. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I answer all comments. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.